marker. Hello everyone, welcome to Howard Taylor's Drafting Table. Today's show is Big Dumb Cover Art, uh, because the next Schlock Mercenary Collection, uh, Book 16, is called Big Dumb Object, and it needs a cover. Uh, I can't guarantee that's what we're going to work on though, because my brain is super tired. Um, I, I, if you follow me on Twitter, you may have seen that uh, we had more adventures in dishwashing today with uh, plumbers and water everywhere and uh, but hey let's do let's do this I am going to start by pulling out book 14 uh, schlock mercenary broken wind um, and the reason I'm pulling this out I'll turn it sideways is so you can see the aspect ratio I'm going to be working with uh, working with for the cover. That is about the same size, about the same size as this. Um, I, same size, same aspect ratio. And so to begin with, I'm just going to thumbnail a bunch of, a bunch of crap. Um, one of, one, I said I'm, I'm going to thumbnail a bunch of crap. If I, uh, uh a magnet over and now all of my stuff is going to fall off the drawing table over here where you can't see it. Um, if this is about the size of the book cover, um, it may be a little bigger, uh, then that is about the size of the cover art. And one of the things that I will often do is mock up the title title stuff this is all this is all just junk to tell me about where and I know the the art window is a little bigger than the postcard I've got um, I mock this up so that I can see where the art I'm I'm gonna be making is gonna fit um, and then and then I just turn the turn the brain loose and I'm still waiting for the brain to kick in. Uh, Big Dumb Object features, uh, you know, that's a, actually a great place to start. Big, Big Dumb Objects features Schlock, it features uh, Landon, the polar bear. It is, spoiler alert, it's the book where Captain Tagon uh, blows himself up. Um, it's the book where we get to see, uh, we, we get to see the, uh, Sanctum Adroit, uh, team in combat, um, and we have some, some big dumb objects. The, the BDOs, uh, BDO is a sci-fi term, um, for large science fictional structures. Uh, the ring world, uh, from Larry Niven is a big dumb object. Uh, um, Dyson Sphere, uh, big dumb object. The BDOs that are featured in, um, in this book include... Ina Afa, which I've gotten a lot of mileage out of. Um, the broken, uh, what, what do they call it? The, it was a Dyson balloon, uh, broken Butandi, uh, which was a, essentially a giant light sail. Um, and uh, what else? What else? What else? Um, oh, I you know what the uh, the ship Cindercone at eight kilometers in uh, diameter uh, qualifies as a big dumb object. Um, I know there were more. <laughs> I know. I know. Oh yes, uh, at the at the very end we have the um, 
we have the SB Tree City, and we have the uh, the World Forge, um, whose name I've forgotten. And I think that's the book where Petey uh, messes around with uh, Oizri a little bit. Maybe he captured. Uh, no, I, yeah, I think Oizri. There's a reason. I, there's a reason I named the book what I did. I knew I was gonna. I knew I was gonna visit uh, all of these structures. So anyway, I've got this. Uh, I've got this list of key elements. Let's see if I can find a magnet. And I'll just put a magnet on that so that I can look at it. Um, often when I'm working on often when I'm working on book concept stuff, uh, I will start in color because that helps me see it better than uh, better than just line art would. Um, if I want to put, and I don't think I do, but if I wanted to put Ina Afa in it, um, it uh, English, you know those covers that are mashups of lots of different big sci-fi things that are way too close together to actually truly be in the same picture, that might be the sort of thing that I want to create. It might not. Um, we did something like that with, let's do, scooting back, probably all the way off camera. And when I say we, I mean Jeff Zagal did that with the Planet Mercenary book cover, where we have a battlefield on the front, and we turn it over on the back, and we have a big planet and a spaceship and another spaceship and another big planet and obviously a big text box that's hiding a lot of what's going on um, because that was what we wanted to evoke with that game. My cover is not going to look nearly so nice as, uh, as Jeff's does. This is great. We are how many minutes in? 10 minutes in, and I'm still staring at a blank page. Um, the light sail. If, if I begin with a sail, I, you know what, I just, I don't think I want to do that. These things are so dang big. These things are so dang big. Um, Comic books, comic book covers uh, are meant to evoke what's going on in the book. They're not actually a scene from the book. You're done. Um, and speaking of scenes, I have reference art from... Let's see if I can see it. I have reference art of the, I, the mm, SB tree. If I do a scene change, I think that scene change will show up for all of you and you can see the thing that I am looking at. Did that work? Somebody in chat tell me if it worked. My browser over here says that it worked. Um, so if I wanted to, if I wanted to do something like that, uh, Starfield in the background. There's no reason for those tree bits to be green because functionally they are they are solar panels. Um, but they got colored green, so green it is. Um, if they are green and we're pulling, there's no way I'm going to get the same uh, same perspective going on as I did in that, uh, that full page thingy. Um, if I've got that happening in the background, what do I want to put in the foreground? I, 
I don't know. Um, I mean, it's a cool picture. That's a that was a really fun picture. Um, but I don't think it's I don't think it's a book cover picture. Uh, spaceships shooting each other, blowing each other up. Um, I don't think are book cover pictures. If I mouse over to where's my mouse? There's my mouse. If I mouse over to this, and I think I can. Page through things. Oh yeah, so this book has the SPs in it. It has Taegum with a bomb. It has. Oh, this is the this is the story where I do the joke a couple of times with Chizulo and Elizabeth at the door, uh, where the door is is too small for them. Um, and they are both big. And so a character piece, which is Chizulo and Elizabeth, I realize this doesn't look like much. This is just horribly sketchy. Um, and boy, it, it uh, may steal the moment from the book, but then it might not. And it's such a cool scene. Do, 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 do. Um, Sorry, this is this is very much an under the hood sort of uh, sort of stream for you guys because I am I am taking you deep deep into my process. I just bought this pen today. It is a Tombow gray pen, and boy, I sure hope those lines can show up. I don't know if you can even see what I would be doing with those. Um, but I think, so this is, this would be an enlarged, enlarged version of that, uh, that thing. And if that's my horizon line and expand some of these and This is probably not showing up very much at all, um, but I'm just, I'm just doing, I'm just doing panel, uh, I'm just doing like a super rough composition. Uh, who else is big? Who else is big? This is the book where we get Tandersil. Um, yeah, this this sketch idea may be totally stealing an emotional moment from the book. Thumb goes to the back. None of these things actually have to be shaped correctly at this point in the composition process. All of this would get, all of this would get redrawn, will get redrawn if, uh, if it's what I decide to use. Um, so we've got Tagon running with a, uh, uh, 
create running with the bomb, and then we do get grab that gray pen again. Where, where are our perspective lines here? That one's probably in the wrong place. But with those in place, I can put schlock in the background. Landon in there. I think I can get Landon in there. He had a huge gun and I want to pull a reference up for it. And also I want to concentrate on which way some of these lines run if holding his weapon this way, then it kind of moves in the same direction that does. some uh, uh, scribble some scribble some chizulo uh, because chizulo needs to be big I need to let that bake in my brain for a moment. I am going to look up at chat, which on my screen is over here. Um, first episode of Schlock Mercenary had Chizulo in it. Um, uh, first episode you read. Yes, yes, I, that was a lot of fun to do. Um, I love watching Creative Process. Thank you very much. Um, Jaded Cynic, uh, you're welcome. You're welcome. I'm happy to have provided entertainment. Um, Green Melbar, you probably could draw if your life depended on it, but the circumstances regarding the life-threatening would, would have to be exactly right. Um, okay. Well, I'm, I'm trying to get Chizulo in there, and I have, I have this reference art over here. Let's... Uh, for Chizulo's face, if I grab the slider and say be bigger and then that's not as much of his face as I wanted, but and given the way I'm constructing this, it doesn't really matter all that much. Ear is going to want to be bigger. Okay, and now let's block. Let's block in some color. Um, color, 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 color. E two. This will just be Tagon's face and hands. Y15. I know he's wearing his helmet in 
that part of the story, but for covers, you give those things a miss. Um, I don't remember what color his uh, uniform pants are. And it doesn't matter. I can I just need to block this out so I can see where the big things are that are happening. And I think Travis has been coloring him with an olive shirt of late. Just, that's not the right color. Three, ah, I wanted his neighbor, G94. This guy. G94 is acting like he needs to be refilled. Um, boots. The device probably going to be a cool metallic color, so I'll go with the C3. BV23. We'll, we'll add a little, add a little violet to it, give it some visual interest. Even though this is not the stage at which things should be visual, inter visually interesting. This is just me messing around. Um, BV23. Go with back here. Looking up at chat. Um, his shirt color kind of matches the one Howard is wearing. Well, you know, it kind of does, but if you wanted a more exact match, you would use, and by you, I mean me, uh, that actually is what I should have picked up to begin with, um, the YG95, which is a close neighbor to the color I use for orc skin tone when I'm coloring... Uh, uh, typecast R RPG. Um, and Orc Skin Tone is also exactly what I use when I'm coloring schlock. It's not perfect. That's the highlight color I use for schlock, YG91. It's when I do marker art. Um, in Photoshop, he's or in, in RGB, I don't remember what his RGB values are, but I've got them written down somewhere because you got to be on model. Um, okay, so we have schlock in the picture. And I'll go ahead and grab a nice big black pen and black in that mouth because that's the way I've composed this right now, that is that is very central. If you uh, if you grab a if you grab a ruler clatter, if you you grab a ruler and rule in from the corners, Schlock's mouth is just a little a little lower than center, which uh, wasn't deliberate, but Sometimes the non-deliberate things like that are, are compositional elements that turn out to be super important. Okay, polar bear color. Um, boy, drawing polar bears, coloring them is just so much fun because white. I mean, we can argue all day about how there's no such thing as as white. It's always shades of the things that are reflecting off of the white. But that doesn't make it any less annoying when you've got something that you know is supposed to be appearing as white. And I think his armor color again in the story was gray, which is not fantastic because it means this picture is going to have a whole lot of 
whole lot of gray in it, especially with Chizulo there behind Schlock. You could give his weapon a slightly more interesting color. Well, and that's that's key. If you if you do the the sci-fi styling thing, if you look at modern firearms, uh, mostly they just look black with occasional little you know neon bits and brown bits and and whatever. Um, but if you look at um, if you look at the stylings in uh, what well, Star Wars is a great example, you'll find like racing stripes and all kinds of stuff like that on things. And even if that is not the kind of weapon that Landon is using in the story, I'm making a book cover. This scene never happened in the book. Um, Green Melbar, sorry to lose you. Oh wow, it is late in Germany. It's like 2 a.m. Um, get a good night's sleep. Uh, okay. Um, and Chizulo, um, Chizulo's weapon, or Chizulo's weapon, Chizulo's uniform has teal patches in it, which is helpful, but, uh, boy, not very many. Um, he is gray but he is going to be a warm gray. If I, if I give him the toner gray color, he'll disappear into, uh, disappear into Landon's armor. And cool six. This probably won't even show up. Pearl white, giving him a Tusk color. Okay. Um, as general compositions go, this is this is pretty good. I think I'm in. Uh, I think I'm in decent shape for this. Um, the background needs to be something other than an interior, and I think this is where. I get to sell the big dumb objects idea. Let's. There you are. That's the guy I'm looking for. Um, but let's fatten some of these lines up so that I can see where the uh, where the foreground elements begin and end so that as I'm putting things in the background I can see where lines are likely to collide. Not the best take on face I've done, but at least now he has a face. Okay. So I've got that in my extreme foreground. and I'm actually going to fatten that line up a lot more because this piece 
is not the cover. This piece is just for my eyes so I can make sense of things. Okay, we got Tagon in the foreground. Now let's lock in the silhouettes for Schlock and the others. Final version of this, I may need to have Schlock closer so that that, that big screaming mouth is closer and the hand is bigger. Um, I'll go ahead and give Schlock another hand. That's that's good. All right. Chizulo's weapon. Or not Chizulo's weapon. That's Landon. Come on. I know these characters' names, I swear. And they're not interchangeable just because they're big guys. Okay, Landon behind Schlock. Chizulo behind Landon. By doing it in this way with, uh, with them staggered in increasing size as we increase in distance, I'm able to cheat the scale a little bit. Um, I, can, I can make the guys who are really big look even bigger without them taking up much, uh, much real estate on the page. Um, Best example of this trick from cinema that I can think of is um, Monsters vs. Aliens. Uh, there's a scene where we get to look at the little tiny bug guy and then past him at, uh, past him at a couple of the medium-sized characters and then Ginormica and then in the distance the, the giant robot. Um, it looked super cool in 3D, but it actually looks really good in 2D, uh, 2D as well. Um, this picture is not going to sell that level of scale, but by acknowledging that that kind of thing is sort of going on here, I can accomplish something perhaps like awesome and impressive in the background. Wow, that, that pen, you're done. You're dead to me. You, you really that? Goodbye. I have to go get another one of those. Um, now what I can put in the background is we will start super, super pale, super pale. Pale Earth Tone E53. And that 
reference image I had up before would be useful now. You can probably see, I hope you can see what it is that I'm, I'm trying to do here. Um, where I'm uh, putting the World Forge and the Esperaran city tree in the background behind Tagon. And these, boy, these really are just placeholders. The final composition, I would, I would go back to, I would go back to reference and I would make sure that I'm, uh, I'm drawing them much more, much more precisely. I'm going to need more space there because I think I think I figured out what ship were they in? They were in the They were in Broken Wind. They were in Broken Wind, so it's egg-shaped. So we do do the egg shaped broken wind whoops that is totally off camera you guys couldn't see any of what i was doing sorry about that um take broken wind and BW's colors. I don't remember exactly. They're kind of putty-ish. But if I take those and then throw some sci-fi, you know, rocket yellow in here. So I've got their ship zipping past the world tree. The world tree. It's not the world tree, it's the city tree. World tree is somebody else's mythos. Um, tighten this up a little bit. And then, whew, and then we make a mess. Lots and lots of thick black ink. I think I mentioned this the last time I streamed while using this, uh, 
using this marker. I feel a little bit guilty using this guy just to throw down black paint, but the brush, it's so relaxing. Just so... It's, I say it's so relaxing. This really is the whole reason I work in uh, traditional mediums rather than digitally, is because I love the feel of ink on the page. Okay, this guy is acting like he might be empty. Maybe not. Totally refillable. Oops, I colored over some of my rocket streak. That was a mistake. All right, something interesting should go down there. I don't know what yet. Um, come on, fill it in just a little better. if I fill it in just a little better, that needs to be something besides what it is. Oh well. Um, fill it in just a little better, then I get to do stars. And that's always fun. Deep. And, you know, this level of detailing is not really that important for, uh, for concept work, especially concept work where I'm going to be the principal artist responsible for it. But knowing that that is a star field and not just black is, uh, is useful to me. Um, uh, All right, this is this is a lot further than I than I expected to get. Um, at this point, it's I've, I've locked in the idea pretty well. I think um, I mean certainly well enough for my own purposes. Um, I don't have a cover yet. I have a sloppy old piece of concept junk. Um, But from here, I might be ready to start to start laying uh, uh, start laying some basic pencils down, um, and I would be using pencils rather than uh, rather than markers, uh, laying some basic pencils down on the actual page I would be using. Let's see, get my make that go away. Actual page is quite a bit larger. Um, let's this is uh, blue line blue line artboard. Um, I have a clip right up there that I could, I could hang this from. I'm going to magnet it in front of me. Uh, 
this might need more staring at before I'm ready to uh, ready to do this next part. Um, because when I'm doing this part, some of those happy accidents like Schlock's mouth being you know near the near the cross cross point. Uh, I would just I would just start with that and then make Schlock's hand bigger and how large is Tagon? Tagon's head hits about there. This is the point at which we want to get the anatomy right. And if we want to get the anatomy right, that head is too big. Way too big. And schlock is too big. Um, so what I need to do is I need to use the uh, HDDs, the gross shapes, the big, the big silhouettes. Um, Tagon takes up. about this space and I'm just sort of blobbing him blobbing him in um, I need to make sure I leave room for the city stuff over here Unfortunately, because I'm working in in such a pale pencil at this point, uh, the, the next part of this process really is two hours of just refining with, with a pale pencil, and there's not a whole lot to look at. So I think, in the interest of being a little more interesting to you, um, it's time for me to set this aside and maybe take some requests. Um, are there things that you would like me to draw? Hello, chat. I'm, I'm looking, I'm hitting my light. Eh. Looking over at chat, looking at the camera. Um, ask me anything. Uh, give me, give me, give me drawing prompts. Let's. Let's have a little fun for the next uh, next 10 or 15 minutes. Thank you, Felessa. I appreciate that. Okay. Does that stick? Hey, yeah, that sticks. Apocalyptic... Chizulo, Scarecrow being attacked by a huge crow. I'm stuck on the elephant now. The Writing Excuses crew in schlock style. Uh, boy, that's who um, I would need. I would need photo reference. I haven't actually done caricatures of any of that group uh, beyond a caricature of me, and it's difficult to them to do them justice. Uh, Guthrak uh, awakes. Um, an ant on the elemental plane of fire. Um, yeah, that's just going to be colored orange. Uh, apocalyptic Chizulo. isn't really going to be apocalyptic. Ooh, 
Ooh, this pen comes apart weird. That's not how that goes. Ah. You go there, you go there. All right, you guys said apocalyptic, so it is on. Pour down my little eraser bumpers that were holding things in place. We'll use a magnet, that'll work. YRO2 seems like a nice place to start. This is really very silly. This is very, very silly. Uh... Okay, I've reached the point in the piece where the next things I do are probably going to wreck it. <laughs> and I'm fine with that.
What is he wearing? He's, he's apocalyptic. He's not wearing anything. I feel like he should be menacing a small wizard. I... That's a lot of work. Maybe you're the small wizard and he's menacing you. All right, that was fun, but I'm ready to stop at this point. I think anything I add to it is not actually gonna make it better. Uh, yes, his leg is unfinished. Eh. What else you got? Ah. <sighs> Oh, yeah, somebody mentioned the red eye. I forgot to do my favorite thing to do now that I have... All right, where'd I put it? Where did... Ah, there it is. Now that I have white paint. There. So menacing. So very menacing. Lock out mimicking a mimic. Uh, <laughs> out mimicking a mimic. Mimics like turn into treasure chests, right? Yeah. Starting again.
schlock should be happy about this meal. Mimic mouth interiors, they're going to be like pinkish and what, right? That sound right? That sound on model for D&D uh, &D monsters? This guy needs a refill.
There we go. Schlock out mimicking a mimic. Uh, no need for the speech bubble. We just give him the little the little popping bubble right there, a little thing that says, uh oh. Hey, thank you very much, everybody, for uh, for showing up. Um, I got I got this piece way further along than I thought I would. I'm pretty happy with it. Um, I can't guarantee that I won't think of something better when uh, I get out the pencils and and start going with a you know a full line art render for the uh, big dumb object cover. But uh, uh, I'm happy. I'm happy with this, and you got to see the process. Um, thank you again for coming. Give me a follow, give me a subscribe, visit schlockmercenary.com. Uh, you can see me next week. Uh, I think my next stream will probably be Tuesday on uh, Typecast RPG, uh, twitch.tv slash Typecast RPG. Um, until then, uh, y'all don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. I don't know what my sign-off tagline is. I just need to click the button, I think.